Hi everybody, welcome to All Games New and Old. I'm David Rodriguez, and today I'm going to be unboxing Alter Quest, uh, along with, I, I don't know if this is everything from the Kickstarter, but a lot of things from the Kickstarter. So, uh, I, I'm, Miniature Market is not a sponsor of me in any way, but they've recently brought back their deal of the day, and they've gotten me twice now on these big Kickstarters. First, I got the all-in bundle of, like, Batman the Animated Series, because it was a good price. And then they had, uh... Alter Quest, and it wasn't bundled together, so I'm that's why I'm not sure if this is actually everything or not. It might be, uh, but it's um, you know I've got the main game, and if you're, I'll show you what all I have here. But this is at least a lot of the Kickstarter, and this one really flew under my radar, and I can't remember. I want to say it might have been uh, Secret Cabal. I'm not sure. We're talking about the one of them. At least talking about how much they really like this game. I could be wrong on the podcast, but uh, so uh, I was intrigued, and I was like, dang, and I missed that. And then this came up, and um, I decided to go for it. So this is put out by Blacklist Games, and is designed by Adam and Brady Sadler. Now, um, I'm awful with names, so I can't remember which one. One of them, I believe, has decided to uh, stop designing games and is going to um, be pursuing a writing career, which I think is really awesome. I, myself, would love to write as well. So, uh, whichever one of you it is, I'm, I'm so sorry I'm forgetting, but... Um, I wish you the best of luck. I hope your uh, books sell like mad and you get movie franchises or like TV, whatever. I hope it's amazing for you. Um, I I love to see that. Uh, I mean, not that I want them to stop making games, but just I, I like to see people pursuing their dreams like that just makes me happy. So uh, congratulations to you. I hope it goes fantastic. Um, I will definitely check out what you write. Uh, so let me show you a little bit what I got. So this is the main box here. I have this, which is the first four expansion, which I believe it has some more heroes in it. I have this lurker pack. I have no idea what that is, uh, but I think that might be bad guys, but I'm not sure. I have the Ruins of Arkinspire expansion. And then this is a big box of stretch goals. Underneath this, I have the neoprene mat. I need to figure out how I'm going to store my neoprene, you guys, because I'm starting to amass it. I don't get it with every game, but um, it was like, it, it was heavily discounted uh, on Miniature Market, so I decided to just go ahead and do it. And uh, just storing this is a pain. I also got this set of hero dice and the base ring pack. So, uh, you know, these aren't super exciting. These are what they are, but I mean, the dice look cool. Base rings are just normal base rings, but. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this one box at a time. This will be kind of a longer video just because of everything that there is here. But uh, we'll get through it. And it'll be fun to see this game. Um, all right. I love big high fantasy games. Some people are tired of high fantasy. I don't think I ever will be. It has been something I've loved just about forever. Uh, you know, I don't see it changing anytime soon. So... Let's zoom in just a smidge. So this is the main box. So it's a cooperative game, one to four players, has a modular deck system. I'm not sure if that's something they've used in other games or not, or if this is like the first time they were planning to use it otherwise. I do believe, and I could be wrong, I do believe one of the brothers is staying in board game design, but don't quote me on that. I could be incorrect. So, we'll see. All right, Alter Quest. All across the troubled lands of Eridica, altars plague the forgotten places. The dark dungeons, ruined castles, endless caves, and power-hungry villains seek them out in hopes to harness the corrupted magic that emanates from them. While these mysterious stones are commonly believed to be physical manifestations of the godlike entities known as runes, they have been twisted and pushed to the surface of the earth by the vile Lich Queen Zara. Zara, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, that sleeps deep within Eridica. Heroes have taken it upon themselves to seek out these altars and secure them from the enemy's control. However, the powers once locked within the altars have already escaped into the world, and ancient evils have already begun to stir. I have to tilt this a little bit because I'm getting a lot of glare. Alter Quest is a cooperative board game for one to four players, where players take on the roles of daring heroes embarking on epic quests. With gameplay driven by designers Adam and Brady Sadler's popular modular deck system, Alter Quest offers a unique dungeon crawl experience in which players can choose to modularly combine hero decks, villain decks, threat decks, and quest decks to create their own adventures or embark on a narrative story to further explore the original fantasy world of Fruna. Featuring four distinct heroes to play as, three deadly villains to face off against, three groups of threats to fight, six varied quests to take on, and over 75 highly detailed miniatures, Alter Quest provides a wealth of gameplay options. 
Players use custom dice to resolve challenging tasks and explore an environment filled with beautifully sculpted terrain pieces, adding a new level of immersion to every game. Choose your hero deck and prepare yourself for adventure. I love games like that where they'll take like, let's take this from this deck and this deck and we're going to shuffle them together and that's going to uh, alter how your game plays. That makes me happy just because it, it tends to lend to a lot of variety to a game. So I absolutely love that. Uh, so it says it plays 45 to 120 minutes, ages 14 and up, one to four players. So let's get into this first box here. You know, I love a good dungeon crawl game. I have several of them. And the trick with these kind of games is, is getting it so they can really differentiate themselves, you know, because they could all end up feeling kind of samey. You know, they have potential to anyway. Like I, I have uh, Descent, I have Madara, I have Massive Darkness 2, I have Chronicles of Drunagor. I mean, there's just, there's hordes, hordes of dungeon crawls. And you know, like uh, Gloomhaven, is, is very different. There's no dice, you know, everything is card driven. It's, it's kind of more a, a Euro game, but a dungeon crawl at the same time. So, you know, a little different. Most of these have dice of some sort. And so really it's just a matter of them trying to figure out how to make each one a little different. And so I, <laughs> I hear my kids making weird noises in the background, but um, so I think this one has an excellent chance with that, with the way you build the decks. So I think it's, it's showing me on the side Street Masters. I think that might use that same modular deck system. I'm not very familiar with the street master i haven't i haven't played that so i can't say for sure but all right here is our rule book uh back is just kind of a little summary credits here so it looks like the rules are 26 pages which is really not too bad for a game of this type sometimes these big you know adventure um dungeon crawl games can be very heavy uh in terms of just rules that you have to figure out because you have to cover line of sight and all kinds of other crazy stuff. I don't know how big an issue that is here, but um, yeah, doesn't look too bad. So here is our story guide. It says out of Luxon. My kids are making really weird noises downstairs. I think I'm gonna close the door. Oh, she's got vampire, vampire mom and baby, creepy. Okay. I don't want to linger too much on those because, uh, you know, story beats kind of spoilers. Okay, I did just close the door so you don't hear my kids making crazy noises as they play video games, which is cute but not very helpful. Uh, okay, so we got a whole bunch of tokens. I do not know what they do, but they are certainly there. Uh, we have more tokens here. Some of them look like they might be some characters. I don't think those are your players because I believe those are all miniatures, but they might be maybe they're NPCs you run across. I'm not certain. These look like they are probably damage tokens because they've got like, you know, like a blood splatter with a number in them. Coins, perhaps. I'm really just guessing until I can really do at this point. But uh, a lot of stuff. Actually, not really that many different kinds of tokens. Uh, if you watch my Madara unboxing, wow, there's a lot of tokens in that. That's, it's kind of bonkers. So uh, I'm going to put these extra rings and dice in here. I think these, I mean, I think they really are just extra so you don't have to keep um, digging out. So this is probably going to be the same as the neoprene mat. Yeah. Now what I'm curious about, because this is not modular, it's not a game with a bunch of tiles. Like I wonder how that's going to work because your, if your map is always basically the same, it makes a variety a little harder. So I'm curious how they did that. I have no doubt that it is in fact a game with a lot of variety. I'm not worried about it, but I just wonder how they, how they accomplish that. Okay. I don't think I'm going to go through all the cards, but let me zoom down a little bit here so you can kind of see some of the creatures. I will probably open one or two of these packs. Let me get through and, and find more interesting ones. The showdown. That might be a scenario thing, so I don't know if I want to get into that. But that's pretty good, I have to say. I like it. She looks very vampire-y. Okay, that's pretty. See, I'm not sure exactly what I should start by opening. I don't know, because like, I think like this guy and like one of the previous ones at least was like one of the heroes. Uh, maybe more than one of them are. So I'm wondering if um, if this is like entirely like a deck for that hero. I'm not sure. But that's very vivid. I like the color they use. I wonder if this might be monsters. 
could be. And then here are, these are bigger ones. See, this is, it's got your hair on there. Let me open this. I'm curious about, these might be dividers. I bet these are dividers. I'll take a quick peek. If they're dividers, I'll just open the regular, or some of the regular cards, but. I think they are. You probably put their cards. So I think this gal who I assume is a vampire is one of the heroes he can play as, which is pretty neat. I like her. She's got crazy, like, I don't know, like griffin arms or something. It's pretty bizarre. So, yeah, I'm, I'm betting these are uh, dividers for the different types of cards, which is cool. I like it when games are nice enough to uh, give you those so that you're not trying to, like, figure out a bizarre system to manage your cards. Let me get... Uh, I'm going to open the Vampire Gal, because I'm very curious. Myrene Duval. Now, one thing I'm always curious to see is, you know, it's got four characters. So I wonder if this is a game where all four characters need to be played, or if you can, you know, if you're playing two players, just play two of them. Like, I know um, Madara is one where you need to have the characters that fit the specific scenario you're at. Like, um... If you're playing, like there's one-off missions, I forget what they call them, and in those, I think you still you still have to pick four characters, and at first, you only have four to choose from until you unlock them in the campaign. I mean, you could just open them up, but that's fine. But, um, but in the campaign, the scenarios are such that you need to like um, use whatever ones they give you, basically. So I think this is all her stuff. This is, I don't know, it really excites me. I like, I like the character designs on here. They're pretty cool. And I like that they have their own unique um, decks. I don't know, I may be getting into other stuff now, I'm not sure. Eh, I don't know. Maybe. Okay, so yeah, I'm getting into like one of the uh, scenarios because this is out of Luxon Bulks the Belch Lord. <laughs> Belch Lord, that's fantastic. But her... Yeah, so that's her deck. Okay, I see. That makes sense. Okay, so I'm not going to open all these, but um, I think I will open the gal with the Griffin Arms, her deck, because I'm curious about her. Okay, the plastic's really sticking to me. But we have a lot to get there, so I don't want to open every single thing, because my goodness, that would be a battle. All right. <laughs> the plastic is really sticking to me. Oh, static. Okay. She is uh, Quelia, or Quella. Harpy, oh, they're Harpy Talons. Okay. There you go. That's pretty neat. Invigorate. Yeah, this looks really cool. I really dig in there a lot. Okay, and then we got some equipment stuff. Okay, great. I get it. All right, I'm not gonna look through everything. Let's get to the um, let's get to some of the models in here. I don't know if there's anything else other than the models left. Doesn't look like it. okay. All right. So now a lot of these models are repeats. Like they don't have like a like a different model for every single um, one of the same monster. You know, which I mean makes sense. It's cool when they do, but you know it's fine. All right. So I don't know the characters' names yet. Um, but this, this looks like the vampire gal to me. Sorry about the shaky camera. Had to get to focus on her and not the background. That's the problem when I have anything in the background is it doesn't want to focus on the thing I'm showing it very well. So the hero models look pretty good, I've got to say. Nicely detailed. Um, fairly good stiff plastic. Not the weird bendy stuff that some games have. I'm always kind of bummed when it has the the bendy plastic. It's just not great quality usually. And it's like, I don't know if I want to paint them because I think like the bending is going to kind of make the paint not work great. He's a little halfling guy. Okay. Let's look at some of these other crazy things here. Let's get this big kind of froggy looking monster with a, a big thing on his back. I'm not sure what it is, but it looks cool. Got this, I was gonna say it's a throne, but I don't know if it is, because it doesn't really have a seat, but interesting uh, thing. <laughs> I'm just gonna call it a thing. This, 
Uh, looks almost like it might be like a, a fountain kind of thing. I don't know if that's accurate, but it sort of looks like it. Got a cool bookshelf here. Like that. I like it when they have like neat terrain pieces as well as just like the models. Like it's fine to just have the models, but this looks like maybe a mirror. Very cool. And how about a treasure chest? Very nice. Okay. This one. This one's really neat. Look at that cool desk experiments going on. These cool bottles and stuff. I love that kind of thing. Awesome. We have like a weapons rack or some shields on the floor there. It's pretty cool. Got a whole bunch of mushrooms. These are really some cool, excellent designs. I really like them. Okay. All right, there's several of these little, what they're frogs or lizards or what. Quite a few of those. Okay. This might be the same kind of creature, but he's got like a little blow gun. So neat. Several of those as well. Several of these. Might be like a shaman or like a spellcaster of some kind. I'm not certain. And then finally in this tray, we got this big pig guy. So <laughs> he's pretty uh, brutish looking. All right, let me get to the other tray. All right. So lots of them here. As you can tell, there's there's. Uh, quite a few duplicate minis, which is, you know, that's fine. That's kind of what you expect. Oh, these are neat. They're doors, but they're, like, partially open, which is neat. Usually, like, you see them and they'll just be closed, which is also fine, but it's much more interesting for them to be partially open. I think that's a, that's a nice touch. Okay, so the pig guy. Looks like he maybe has a bomb. There's quite, they really like their pig people in this game, it looks like. Lots of pigs everywhere. Okay, this one. Not sure, it might be some kind of ghost, maybe? I mean, I'm not really, oops, I'm not really certain, but it's kind of how it strikes me. <laughs> okay. Another pig, he's got a big club, but he also is eating like a turkey leg or something, which is really fun. I like little details like that. He's a pig guy, you know, he's got to eat. That's just how it is. The pig guy's coming in varying sizes. This is a little bit smaller pig man. He's got a couple blades, so still fairly menacing. Got several of this guy. I'm not sure exactly what his deal is, but... It's not like heavily armored, which makes me think maybe a spellcaster type. I don't know. I could be entirely wrong. And we've got these cool gargoyles, several of those. So really nice. I, I actually really like the models in this. It's got um, not only like nice detail, but just um, cool designs in general. Really like them. Okay, with that being done, we'll move on to one of the other boxes. Why don't we go for a couple of the little things next? Let's go with the Lurker Pack and the first floor pack here. So I'm guessing Lurkers are bad guys. I could be 100% wrong, but it sounds like a, something you might call bad guys. I'm very curious. I'm always interested, like, when they have, like, everything has art on them, but then there's, like, a box that just doesn't really. I'm like, okay, well, what's up with that? Yeah, it's not in the stretch goal box, so I don't really know. I don't know. Just fascinating stuff to me. Okay, ooh, here we go. So it's some Lurker cards here. Let me open up the Lurker cards before I look at the models. The models look um, phenomenal, by the way. We'll get to that. Okay. Let's see, we got goblins, kobolds, orcs, 
zombies, troglodytes, gnolls, giant rat, giant spider, skeleton, imp, ooze, and giant worm. So, uh, pretty normal fantasy creatures, which is cool. I mean, you can't expect to see that. And I'm guessing these models match these cards. Let me step to the side so we can kind of look at these models. There's a little goblin guy. Now I'm not going to remember which monster is which, but whatever. You get it. Goblin, probably. There's the kobold. Okay. Here's a zombie. Not looking well. This is the orc. There's the giant rat. It actually does look pretty vicious. Ugh, gosh. All right, and let's see. Oops. There's the imp. All right, then we have the knoll, I believe. A little big and scary. Um, I don't remember what this is. Troglodyte, maybe? I'm not sure if I'm right. Looks good and beastly, though. All right, a giant spider. Suitably gross. I always hate giant spiders in game because they tend to like poison you and poison always sucks in a game. You don't want to get poisoned. I mean, it sucks more in real life, I suppose. Okay, I'm not going to remember exactly what they call this one either, but it's a big, scary, wormy beast. Looks great, though. This is our skeleton. And finally, I say this one for last just because it's cool. I've got the ooze. It's a nice, cool, clear plastic. That's nice because you don't have to mess with that. I don't have to paint that at all. So, looks great. So that is our lurker box. All right. So let's look at the first four. Actually, this probably has some text I could read, doesn't it? Oh, it's so tiny. Oh my god. See what what paper needs is the ability to kind of zoom in like you do on phones. Wouldn't that be nice? Because holy god. Okay. When the first four races of Eastony made an alliance after years of conflict, it began an age of heroes and prosperity. Gavin Ulrich was the first paladin of the Illuminori. Aerith Nomura was the most acclaimed and arrogant battle mage from the sea city of Elvantis. Charon Herrick was the most cunning pathfinder among the mountain trekking Krazaks. Willow Brooks was the legendary Burry Folk minstrel responsible for keeping her party spirits up. This legendary party saved Ardika from certain doom and are the subjects of countless legends throughout Eastony. Now they are ready for a new adventure. Sorry if I was a little halted reading that, but it really is hard for me to read. It's very small. All right. Explore the legend of the first four in this heroic expansion for Alter Quest. With this hero pack, you'll be able to take on the role of legendary heroes that once sieged the Tower of Arkenspire to lay waste to the Lich Queen, Sarah, freeing the lands of Eridica from her foul tyranny. This expansion includes four brand new hero decks and four highly detailed miniatures to be used in any of your Alter Quest adventures. How exciting. You might hear the wind outside because it is windy. Isn't that exciting? All right. Let's take a look at these guys and gals. I'm trying to figure out they want me to open this. Okay, it's over here. Okay, oops. This looks like... Oh, oh it's got kind of torn. That's okay. It's background. Uh, a little overview of the expansion. A few tokens here. I'm guessing this might be specific to some things that the heroes can do. Let's take a look at... Here, we'll just look at the cards here. Well, I don't want to look at all the cards. Here, let's look at this. We'll look at the, the pictures of the heroes and then we'll look at the miniatures. Okay, Willow Banks, the Bard, Karen Herrick, uh, maybe a dwarf, I'm guessing. Avith 
Namora, and Gavin Ulrich. So, very cool. Um, got the decks, we kind of know what those are about this. I'm not going to look too closely at that right now. Let's look at the models. Here's that elven mage person, I believe. Pretty cool. There's the dwarf gal, she's a cool looking crossbow. That's our halfling bard. And then our paladin type of guy here. So, pretty neat. Okay, that is that expansion. Let's go on to the Ruins of Ark Inspire expansion. Let me zoom that back out so you can see the whole box. All right, let's flip this over and see what this expansion brings us. In the heart of Nethermore is the Broken Tower of Ark Inspire, a once mighty tower built by the sole survivor of the Farron Empire, Zara the Doomchild. Zara's history is inexorably tied to her fortress of Ark Inspire, and its shadow still evokes dread from within the heart of Eridica. Recently, though, the undead profane have become increasingly bold, spreading violence and pestilence throughout Nethermore. Something is stirring in Ark Inspire. That's never good. Ruins of Arkinspire is an expansion for Ultra Quest that takes heroes to the accursed tower that was once the doomed child, Zara's seat of power in Eridica. In the heart of Eridica, the entire region of Nethermore is completely under the control of the Profaned, a legion of undead abominations that serve their necromantic overlords. As the Profaned began threatening the provinces surrounding Nethermore, valiant heroes are needed to push back the undead assault. This expansion includes a host of new content to add to your game including a new way to play the game with encounters. In addition, players can play through the included story to unlock secret content to add to their Alter Quest collection. Okay, let's get into this. All right. All right, let's see what we got here. We're getting there, it's opening. Here's our story guide. I'll linger too much on any of that. Here's our rules, which it's not a ton. It looks like it's just four pages. And you a few things. All right, we have, are these double-sided? Yes, they are. So we have a couple of tiles to be used with this expansion. Look pretty nice. Okay. Then, okay. I'm going to turn this this way. All right, so there's a couple boxes that we do not open. They are surprises for later, so I'm not going to open them, but we'll look at those. Okay, uh, here are more dividers. I'll take a quick peek at these in case we don't go through all the cards. Let's zoom, let's zoom in real quick. Okay, so the Arcanold, Grave Disturbances, In Trouble, Camp Ambush. Into the Arkinspire, into the Arkinspire, Thane, Nathaner, Profane. Okay. So, all your dividers give you an idea what's in there. And let's open, let's see. Okay, so a couple of other like, story things, I think. So, let's just open this one. I think this is going to be most of our monsters. Um, I don't know if there's items in this, but there might be items too. Okay. Oops. This plastic, it just really wants to hold on to me. Okay. Shambler, Wretch, Revenant. Some story stuff. All kinds of items. I don't want to get too much into this in case any of this is story stuff that we're not supposed to actually get into. But, you know, more of the same pretty art, which is great. All right. Let's look at the models. I know that's what I'm always most excited about. Look at this big guy. Very cool. Very tall guy. This looks like maybe a lich or other kind of undead spellcaster, I would guess. We've got a cool partially open coffin. Excellent. All right, we have several of these wretches. This 
several of these guys as well. And then my favorite, I always love when they do this. Um, several of these ghosts. Excellent looking, very cool. Okay, so that is that expansion. Finally, we're gonna take a look at the stretch goal box. Okay, so I don't really have any idea what's in this, to be honest, because as I mentioned, I didn't actually get this through the uh, Kickstarter, but I assume it is a lot more stuff, which is good. Let's flip this over. Uh, so no real text, there's a, um, some cool artwork on the back, but um, I don't know, I wonder if there's more playable heroes. Some of these people look like they might be. So we'll see. Or they could be bad guys too. But I'm guessing there might be new heroes, which is always something I want. I love variety in what characters you play in a game like this. So it keeps you it keeps you coming back, wanting to try different things. And if you start playing one you don't like, you know, you can play a different one. Oops. Okay. Let's see. That's opening easier than I thought. <clears throat> All right. Ooh, this has 135 miniatures in it. Holy smokes. Okay, so it just tells you everything that's in it. It has credits on the back. That's cool. Let's look at this game board that's in here. Okay, wow. So this is just an entirely different uh, game board here. Whoops. Looks neat. Okay. Okay. Wowie, there's a lot. Okay. Oh, that's not all weird. Okay. So we got some special dice here that were not in the other uh, game. So I don't know what they do. Or, or different. Have more uh, rings for the miniatures. Uh, hordes and hordes of dice. Um, let's look at the dividers here because it'll give us an idea of. The artwork. Look at that horse guy. Oh, that's wild. Roger Heston, Vivian, Billy the Kindler, Obsidian. I don't know if these are bad guys or what. I'm sure, it all makes sense when I go through it. Maybe. I think some of these are characters you play as because I do see some of the blue miniatures. So that's neat. Um, okay. Again, we got hordes of cards, which we've kind of seen as the picture of that. So I don't know if I'm gonna go through all this. I'm just gonna flip through and see if I see anything different. I think it's all stuff that we looked at. Okay. I don't expect there's anything underneath here. Oh, maybe, hold on. Oh, there, okay, there's an even bigger tray down below. I shouldn't end that. Okay, so there's a lot of models. 135, in fact, I think I already said that. <laughs> All right, let me move this up to the side. And we will start looking. All right. We have a cage, which is very cool. Oh, good, okay, I was gonna say, I don't know how you paint the inside part if you wanted to, but the top does come off to allow you to do that. And I assume to put models in there, which is pretty neat, actually. Okay. This looks like a very old, possibly dried up fountain. Try to see if it looks like it has water. Oh, maybe it's supposed to have water in there still. I'm not sure. We have this pillar. Looks neat. There is stand of crates. I think this might be a treasure mound. It's a little hard to tell, but kind of looks like it. We have a bubbling cauldron something. We've got this thing, whatever this is. I'm not really sure, but it looks cool. Okay, I'm going to start with what I assume are the playable characters. I've got this thing. <laughs> which is sort of cat-like. I don't really know what that is. Maybe it's something that goes along with one of the characters. I'm not sure. It's very odd looking though. Um, ooh, these are in there tight. This guy has a bow. I'm trying to remember what he has in his hand. It's like a ball, but I'm not sure. 
I have told these at kind of a weird angle to show them to the camera. So sometimes like picking out the details a little harder than it would normally be. We've got um, Dad Bod McGee, I'm assuming is his name. I can't prove that. He definitely has got the Dad Bod going. She looks cool. Ready for action there. But this guy that is like very werewolf or maybe a knoll perhaps, I'm not sure. I'm at least assuming these are playable characters because they're all like the light blue plastic that the player, playable characters have been. So here's our unusual horseman. I don't know about the horseman. Maybe, I don't know. But I mean, it's, it's a good, it's a cool design. I'm just not sure if I'm into it, but. Got a dwarf. You've got a short little guy. <laughs> I don't know what he is. All right, then finally for the playable characters, we have this one looks like a magic user of some type. So pretty cool looking. And let's get into some of the not playable characters. This looks like it's kind of frightening like rat monster of some sort, pretty creepy. A lot of these in here are just, you know, people, other humans, or other groups from fantasy. So they almost look like they could be playable characters, but they're—I don't believe they're. He's reading from a scroll or something. That's really neat. She looks very cool. I think some of these might be the ones that, uh, those tokens I had in the original box that were just, you know, the cardboard tokens with characters on them. I think some of these might be those folks. I'm not, I'm not certain. But I think they could be. The nice thing about being into board game and, and or board gaming and, and dungeon crawl specifically is if you ever decide to play D&D, which I would love to do if I had the time, You've got tons of models to mess with. You don't need to buy a lot of extra miniatures. This guy's got like a round head. That's pretty cool. So a lot of them are fairly human looking. So far in this particular uh, little pack, they've all been individual minis, like no uh, duplicates. So this is, this is that bird guy, I think it is. It's like some kind of magic user. He's got a crazy skull spell thing going off above him. That's kind of neat. All right, let me move on to a different tray. Now, some of these do have duplicates in them. So they, even like the big one probably won't actually take as long as that one did because it's not as many individuals. So let's see here. Several of these guys, it's another, it's like that bird guy, I believe, just, you know, different character, probably bad guy character. Got several of these. It looks sort of like a, a tiefling from D and D. You've got the little horns going. Um, if, you, if I was going to make a tiefling character, I could do a lot worse than this. So, all right. Got these very tall guys. These have horns too, and I can't tell offhand if it's like a helmet, like horn helmet, or if it's actually their horns. But really big. These are actually a little hard to get out of the box because of the axe being how it is. But it's okay. they're all actually pretty tightly packed in there which is cool as far as storage, but then the problem is if you paint them, you may not want to put them in that because you're going to rub off the paint getting them in and out. Some more of those bird guys, magic users of some sort. I'm sure they have a cool name that isn't bird guys, but I don't know what it is, so. These werewolfy type looking individuals. All these, there, there's several of them. I'm not going to keep pointing out that there's several. Pretty much everything I'm showing you in this box, there's multiples of. That, uh, I think that's Moses. Just kidding. No, I don't know. Be old guy. Uh, <laughs> I don't think you'd have multiple Moses. Would it be Mosai? I don't know. Some Bible expert will have to tell me. Okay. That's quite a few of this lady. It looks like, I would guess she's some kind of bandit, maybe. She's got a cool crossbow. Big crossbow. And then there's some rat men here. I guess I think they're rat men. 
Interesting. Pretty bulky. Okay. We got one more tray to go. It is the biggest one. There's definitely duplicate models in here. Although I don't think they're, well, maybe they all are uh, ones with duplicates. I'm not sure. So here's what's interesting is I do have one that's in the color of the player characters, but there's like five of her, the exact same one. So I don't know what that's about. Maybe she can like duplicate herself somehow. I don't know. I am purely guessing. All right, so. Here's one of those bird guys with a little crossbow. Another little rat guy. Uh, these ones look like probably halflings, I would guess. Perhaps bandits. I'm, I keep saying bandits. I don't know if that's actually even a thing in the game, but it just makes me think of bandits. These little things are kind of cute. They're like bull horns and stuff. They're kind of short, like a halfling. Got these dudes look like they've seen better days. Uh, I'm just not looking well. It's too bad for them. Okay. Then. Got these very cool archers. More rat guys. Okay. And then I think everything else. Oh no, there's, there's actually something that looks like it's alive. Or like a living creature. So. We have. These, which look like maybe like a spike pit kind of thing. Several of those. Okay. Is it just like a box, but it has like, I don't know, it's like bones or something in there maybe. Got these flags. These are a little scared getting in and out of there because it's just like, you know, it's got that thin part right there, but they're still tightly in the box, so it makes me nervous. Okay, we have bear traps. All right. Okay, I'm not exactly sure what I'm looking at here. It might be some kind of, like it looks like it has teeth and then I don't, I have no idea what I'm looking at, but it's gross looking, so there's that. And I have what I see is like a big fire eruption. Several of those. And finally, a bunch of these dudes that look like kind of like old timey plague doctors, but strangely proportioned. Very odd, but that's that. So that is everything that I have anyway. Ultra Quest. I don't know if there's more out there, but that's what I have. A lot of crazy stuff. Uh, looks very cool. I'm excited to give this a shot. Let me know if you've tried it. I always want to hear about that if you have, or if you're interested in it. I don't know. I don't know if this is like just out there in print normally or not, or if this is just like something that Miniature Market got a bunch of the Kickstarter stuff. Couldn't begin to tell you, but um, they might still have it in stock. It just wouldn't be their deal of the day. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please like and subscribe and click the little bell icon so you can know about the next time I put out a video. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you all around the table again at All Games New and Old. Bye. If you enjoyed that video, you might also like this one. Or this one. If you like any of our videos, what you should do is click this little button to subscribe so you'll know about the next time we put out a video. We'll see you around the table. Bye. Bye.